This video is part of a series regarding the installation and configuration of Microsoft Active Directory. We will create a new Active Directory force and domain using Windows Server 2025. The procedures here are the same for Windows Server 2022 and previous, and I'll identify the differences where necessary. We will cover operating system preparation, promotion to a domain controller, post-domain promotion first actions, next domain steps. Once the OS is installed and you are at the Server Manager dashboard screen, dismiss the Try Windows Admin Center for now and click the Local Server section. Under the Property area for Server, set your current time zone, set your IP address. The IP address for a domain controller must be static, and it is highly recommended that it is set at the physical adapter. Optionally, with Windows Server 2025, you can enable remote SSH access from within Server Manager, if desired, and set your domain controller's computer name. Reboot when prompted. Update the operating system with the latest updates. At the Server Manager dashboard, under Welcome to Server Manager, click Add Roles and Features. Under Installation Type, leave it Role-Based or Feature-Based Installation. Under Service Selection, the local computer will automatically be added to the server pool. Under Server Roles, add the Active Directory Domain Services role, which will add all the necessary features. Click Next to review the features. Since this is a domain controller, leave the defaults. At the ADDS section, make note of the notes. In a later video, we'll add a second domain controller for the necessary redundancy. At the confirmation screen, Proceed with the installation and leave the Restart the Destination Server checkbox unchecked. When completed, close the Add Roles and Features wizard. With the Server Manager still open, click the Caution symbol on the notification flag. Click Promote this server to a domain controller. Since this is a new domain, in a new force, select Add a new force radio button and provide a new root domain name. The new domain can take any of the following forms. Just be aware that whatever is chosen becomes the root domain. Windows Server 2025 only supports Windows Server 2016 and Windows Server 2025 force and domain functional levels. Windows Server 2016, 2019, and 22 support Windows Server 2008, 2008 R2, 2012, 2012 R2, and 2016 forest and domain functional levels. If this new domain will only contain Windows Server 2025 domain controllers, select Windows Server 2025 for both forest and domain functional levels unless you have a valid reason to select 2016. Use a strong password for the directory services restore mode. The password is unique to each domain controller, but you can make them the same. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you need the DSRM, you're in a bad pool of sticky lava. At the DNS option page, click Next. This warning will always appear. The NetBIOS name will be an eight character truncation of the domain name. However, you can change it to something different if necessary 
or desired. For the location of the ntds.dit file, the actual Active Directory database, and the sysvol folder, leave the defaults. In some environments, it may be policy to place the database, logs, and the sysvol folder on different volumes. If this case applies, understand that all domain controllers must have the same volume configuration. Review the options and export the PowerShell commands for later use if desired. In a later video, we will install a new forest and domain using Windows Server Core. We will make use of similar commands. The prerequisite checks will always produce the same DNS delegation warning. Note that Windows Server 2022 and earlier will also have a warning about Windows NT 4.0 cryptography algorithms. This warning is removed from Windows Server 2025. The server will automatically reboot after it is successfully promoted to a domain controller. Congratulations, you now have the first domain controller in a brand new Active Directory Forest. We can interrogate the new forest and domain for valuable information. Open a terminal or PowerShell session and type get ad forest. This will show important properties of the new forest, including the domains, global catalogs, sites, and which computers hold the domain naming and schema master FISMO roles. Type get ad domain. Likewise, this will show the important properties of the domain, such as which computer holds the PDC emulator FISMO role and the domain functional level. If there are multiple domains within a forest, specify which with the dash identity argument. However, we should do a few things before moving on. Rename or disable the built-in administrator account. Create organizational units for users and computers. Set up a DNS IPv4 reverse zone and enable scavenging. Configure sites and services. And set up a central store for group policy administrative templates. These are my suggestions. Always follow your company's organization policies and procedures for what you believe is best. Since this is a new forest and domain, the built-in administrator account is, by default, both a domain administrator and an enterprise administrator. As server manager, click Tools and select Active Directory Users and Computers. Select the user's container. Right-click the built-in administrator account and select Copy. Enter the necessary information. Click Next. Provide a very strong password and click Finish. Log off and log back on using the new account. Open Active Directory Users and Computers. Under the user's container, right-click the built-in administrator and rename. At the next screen, rename the user login name. Right-click again and select Disable Account. Right-click the domain name, select New Organizational Unit. Make a new organizational unit for users. I'm using domain users. Make OUs for domain admins and domain computers. Move the newly created enterprise administrator into the domain admins OU. So why did we do this? An organizational unit and a container are two different objects. You can apply group policies to an OU but not to a container. For the most part, you'll want most of your objects inside organizational units. 
However, there are some exceptions which we'll see in later videos. You can visually tell the difference by the appearance of the folder icons. The properties of an OU and a container also reflect the differences. At Server Manager, click Tools and select DNS. Expand the server, right click Reverse Lookup Zone and select New Zone. Create a primary zone and select Replicate to all DNS servers running in the domain. Leave IPv4 selected. Put in the first three octets of the network. Leave Allow Only Secure Dynamic Updates selected. Click Finish to complete. Expand Forward Lookup Zones and right click on the Domain Zone. On the General tab, click the Aging button. Click Scavenge Stale Resource Records. Likewise, you can set scavenging to apply to all zones by right clicking on the DNS server and selecting Set Aging Scavenging for All Zones. Close the DNS Manager. Since we're on the topic of DNS, open your Network Adapters IPv4 settings and notice the preferred DNS server. The loopback IP address 127.0.0.1 is there by design as it allows the domain controller to always find itself. Later, when we have a second domain controller, we'll place its IP address into the alternate DNS server field. Back in Server Manager, click Tools and select Active Directory Sites and Services. Expand Sites, right click and rename the default first site name to something meaningful. As your network grows, Sites and Services will become integral. Now we're going to associate an IP subnet with our site. Right click Sites and select New Subnet. Enter the IP network using seated notation and associate it with the site name. With Sites and Services set up properly, you'll thank me later. Close Sites and Services. Now we're going to set up a central store for group policy administrative templates that will be shared and replicated between all domain controllers within a given domain. Open Windows Explorer and navigate to C, Windows, Sysfall, Domain, Policies. Create a folder named Policy Definitions. Copy the contents of C, Windows, Poly Definitions to C, Windows, Sysfall, Domain, Policies, Policy Definitions. The central store is where you will put the group policy templates for other applications such as Microsoft Office, Microsoft Edge, and Google Chrome. The .admx files go into the Policy Definitions folder. The .adml language files goes into the appropriate language folder. Open Server Manager, click Tools, and Group Policy Management. Expand the Forest, Domains, and the Domain. Right click on Default Domain Policy and select Edit. Under Computer Configuration, expand Policies and Administrative Templates. Do the same for user configuration. Notice that it now says policy definitions retrieved from the central store. In my example, you can see where I installed the Microsoft Office and Edge templates. Close the Group Policy Management Editor and Group Policy Management. 
Later in this video series, we'll delve into setting up a new forest and domain using Windows Server Core. No GUI. Think of that video as a parallel to this one. However, following the installation and configuration of Active Directory, the next domain steps to be covered are standing up a second domain controller as recommended by Microsoft, and joining an administrative client computer to the domain. This is a computer from which all domain administrative functions are carried out. It is recommended that administrators not directly log into domain controllers unless absolutely necessary. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new, and found it useful. If you have any feedback, corrections, or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and pass it on to others. And I thank you for watching.